Good to go. All right. Good morning, everyone. Great to have you all here with us today. If you'd like me to allow you five more minutes to visit amongst each other, um, I'm more than willing to go get another ginger ale drink or something like that. You, you tell me. You tell me. I want to um, say to everybody that's gathered here today, or whether you are uh, joining us from your homes, wherever you may be, it is an honor uh, to be able to gather here and to worship with you. It, is, uh, it, it's, it feels wonderful to have all of the uh, Sunday school classes and all of that commotion going on at 9 o'clock in the morning um, with the children that are downstairs and, and our team of teachers that are, that are working to teach. Um, I, I see some of the kids carrying around their, the, the Bibles that, that we had distributed to them, and I see teachers with their Bibles. Um, our uh, adult Sunday school class um, that is... Where were you at today? You, you, you were somewhere to the New Revised Standard. You're, you're in the updated edition already. Great job. You, you got a gifted group of students there working with you. They are advancing quickly. And then our youth gathering today uh, with um, all of the youth that, 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 that joined us in our youth room. Um, the way it was today, if it continues to grow, we may need a new location, don't we, Ramsey? Because we needed a few more seats. Uh, she was willing to sit on the floor, um, but it was uh, wonderful to have everybody there. So we hope that you enjoy uh, your worship experience with us today as we focus on a particular topic that is easy to talk about, but difficult to implement into our own lives in many different ways. A couple things that I want to mention today. Um, one um, prayer of, of concern, our support, um, is, 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 is for the Burkhart family. Some of you know Diane Burkhart. Maybe some of you had Diane as a, a teacher. Some of you may know Wendell Burkhart. Uh, Diane passed away in the, the celebration of her life. Uh, took place yesterday morning at Pierre Funeral Home. Myself, along with Reverend J.D. Rose, uh, who is the current pastor at... Uh, what used to be St. Paul's United Church of Christ on 12th and Michigan. They are now, they purchased a property up uh, the road from West River. Uh, we shared in, in that gathering to celebrate her life. And if you weren't aware or you wanted to send a note out to Wendell or, or anyone in his family, if you know them, Wendell, if you're watching today, which I know sometimes you are, uh, we support you and uh, we offer you our, our prayerful support. We would like to invite you to our Tuesday or Thursday classes at St. Peter's on the Hill. It's no longer St. Peter's United Methodist Church. It is St. Peter's on the Hill. And we'd love to have you there with us as we uh, join together in getting ourselves in shape. Um, we're going to have a, a support group meeting. You can see on Monday, September 25th. And if you'd like to join us, if you're new to that gathering, if you haven't ever joined us or you have some questions about it, Please let us know. We'd love to have you be there with us. Our classes uh, will begin today officially. We had a, a, a meeting last week. For those of you that are in confirmation classes, whether you are 7th or 8th grade, 7th grade students will meet in the Sunday school hall, which is right up the stairs, and all our 8th grade students will meet in the youth room just behind. Um, that may move and that may adapt itself, but we will be beginning today and uh, we'll get all that worked out. It won't be a problem at all. You can see the adult Sunday school class. I'll leave that up for this week. Um, Nancy was, was just talking about that. Um, they're moving through a study on the various ways in which all of the um, interpretations of the Bible that we have kind of had, had come to be. Our new members class, um, are, if those of you are, are, are here and are thinking about joining Zion Church, we'd love to have you let us know. Once we get enough interest, um, please... Um, let me know or, or, or any members of our church council, and then we'll, we'll have a get-together and we'll, we'll make a final decision. I received a note last week that I wasn't sure what it was. It just said doctor and a phone number. <laughs> I didn't know whether I should call that number or that was somebody interested in the new member possibilities, but if that was somebody here today, uh, find me after um, worship service or find somebody and, and, and let them know, and uh, we can um, make sense of, of what that may have been. 
A couple additional announcements. I received a text message this morning from Ruth Redman that um, said, uh, please announce the bus trip to the Derby Dinner Theater on November 10th is full. And she ends that with a thanks. You could, end, you could just give me the thumbs up. You know, it's like, thanks, I got gotcha. you. And then uh, the last one is um, the Zigglers are going to have a memorial service uh, for Ron Ziegler uh, next Sunday uh, following worship at 1 p.m. We'll gather downstairs in uh, the, the, the kitchen area uh, at, at 1 o'clock to celebrate Ron's life. And, and so, Martha, uh, we look forward to usually sitting. There you are. We usually um, we'll, we'll work together this week as we talk to get that gathering set and put together, and I'll announce it next week as well if anyone would like to attend. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that being said, Miss Jolene Hainer, who's coming off a recent birthday celebration, um, is here to play us this morning uh, our prelude, and we'll move into worship. All right. Great job. If you'd like to join me in prayer, whether you're standing or seated, I invite you to 
to join me in whatever manner you choose. This morning, we offer these words. Lord of life, give to us the grace and the power to live risen lives. We pray that we may walk the way of the servant of God, who came not to be served, but to serve. Fill our hearts with the assurance of eternal life. And make us confident that whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. Be with us in this time of worship. We ask it in the name of him who died that we might live, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing. Children, I invite you to come forward. Everyone else, please, please be seated. All right. Here's everybody. Who wants one of these? You got one? Who wants another one? You want one of these? Anybody else want one of these? You helping? You going to help with this? Yeah, excellent, excellent. Whoa, goodness gracious. Sorry. There he is. You okay? Yeah, I turned around and got you. Right in the eye. You going in the pulpit today? That's right. That's right. Oh, boy. There, Mom found you. All right. Good morning, good vibes. I want to talk to you today about a big word. We're going to talk about it in church for a while. It's going to be the focus of our sermon today and the scripture reading after we're done here. This word is about this long, if you were to spell it out, and it starts with an F, and it has to do with something that God and Jesus invites us to do. What do you think? Friendship. It's about that long. Yeah. And sometimes friendships can be altered or deepened by doing this. What's another word that you might think of? Yes. Forgive. So friendship and forgiveness. Forgiveness. Who here has ever had someone do something that hurt your feelings? Yeah, only two of you? Okay, you've made it through life pretty easily. Have, have you ever been upset or angry with someone for what they did? Yeah, is that an easier one to identify with? Has anyone ever stolen or taken something from you? 
Oh, kind of, you don't, you don't, you don't, not sure you want to do it or not do it? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I almost got in trouble one time when I, I never got caught. I've, I've said this before, so I don't encourage you, you to do anything like that. Have you ever taken some candy or something when you were a little child or something and you were in the line going through the grocery store and you might have snuck a piece of candy and tried to eat it quick? Anybody done that? <laughs> isn't, that isn't that kind of, we, we had a couple hands that went like, oh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm not going to do it. it. It's okay. It's really, it's okay. We, we, it's, it's okay to talk about those, those things. Sometimes things can happen to us and it can make us feel horrible. It can make us feel really, really bad. When I was, how old are you? You're eight. When I was, I was probably, I was probably about your age. Uh, I was in second grade. Are you in second grade? What grade are you in? Third grade. You're in third grade this year. So I was in second or third grade, I don't remember, and it was the first time in my life that I couldn't see the chalkboard very well. And I had to get glasses. And I had glasses for the very first time. And I came to school with my glasses for the very first time. And what do you think some of my friends said to me? What do you think they said? Not nice things. What are some of the things you think they said that weren't nice? What do you think? I don't like your glasses. What other things do you think they said? You guys are over there smiling. You know, you just don't want to say it. Look at you over there, smart Alex. You're like talking to each other. Didn't think I'd notice. I got my glasses on today so I can see better. Yeah. What other things do you think they said to me? Come on. What do you think? What? Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's exactly right. <laughs> they called me four eyes. Um, I don't like your glasses. You look stupid. They make you look ugly. Sometimes people say mean things like that. And Sometimes it can really, really hurt our feelings. Sometimes it's our responsibility to try to do the best we can to forgive them for what they said and to understand that we aren't ugly, that we aren't unworthy, and that we are incredible people, regardless of whether we wear glasses or we have short or long hair or we wear shorts, or we wear slacks, or whether we're great at math, or we're only pretty good at shop classes. We're all different. We're all very different. Not everybody operates that way. That's why it's so important for all of us to begin to learn and to continue to learn what it means to be that voice of forgiveness to your friends, your classmates, your family. And the story that you're going to hear me read in just a few moments is a story of forgiveness for someone that owed a lot of money and then somebody that owed that same person that got forgiven a little bit of money and how they treated that person differently than they were treated. Jesus says we should forgive not just seven times, but many, many, many times, 77 times, 777 times. Keep forgiving and keep moving forward. Yes, sir. Somebody might say, your glasses look weird. You're exactly right. Yeah, yes, they did. Do you think they look weird? Do you like my glasses now or not? You like them now or they look weird? You like them now? Yeah, okay, great answer. Otherwise, you were going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Can you pray with me? And then you guys are going to take care of the offering for me because you're awesome at doing that. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us to understand what it means to forgive many, many, many times. Amen. Good job. Great job. Thanks for helping me out.
I want to read to you today from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. As I mentioned, with the children and um, some of the youth that were up here today, uh, this is a story of, of forgiveness uh, some, and the manner in which forgiveness was gave and forgiveness wasn't. And, and how all of that plays out and how we're taught by Jesus to try to be better forgivers in our lives. It goes this way. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Remember that, 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. Remember that, in comparison to the talents. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and they reported to their Lord what had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. This is a story. I always find it interesting if it was actually just like this. How were people ever repaying their debts if they were in prison or they were going to be tortured till they could pay that debt? Interesting study. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Which brings us to these reflections today. Today's sermon reflections are ones that are based in this gospel. And you should know the story because it illuminates a key element and one of the core principles of our faith, and that's forgiveness. As I said earlier this morning, sometimes it's much, much easier to talk about, to think about, and to actually engage in and to actually do. Jesus asked us to pray that God forgives us as we forgive others and as they have forgiven others, and that forgiveness should pour out from us in how we treat others. And he said, we shouldn't forgive someone just a few times. If it takes a little bit longer, do it as many as 77 times or even more. But forgiveness can be incredibly difficult to grant or receive, can't it? It's not like you can just squeeze your eyes, shut your eyes, and declare something forgiven, and everything reverts back to exactly the way it was before. Have you ever thought that you'd forgiven someone or something and later something strikes you or triggers you and you feel that same animosity, you feel that same feeling, you feel that same way all over again? We might have to forgive that same 77 times, but how do we go about doing it? It just isn't easy in Scripture Forgiveness is usually talked about by using images, and those images frequently are the balancing of scales. When there's an offense, when there's something that's thrown off, when there's something that's out of sorts, 
one side of the scale gets weighed down and it gets dealt with and the relationship that was once out of balance or the situation that was once out of balance can be back in place. And our language is similar. If somebody does something to us, we might think, I'm going to get even with you. I want to share a couple stories with you today, and this is the first one. It happened on Tuesday night. And I got kind of angry, but I was also really tired, so I thought I'm not even going to deal with it. I just got back in my car and left. Tuesday night, I was leaving football practice, and Tuesday night was a council meeting. So we're doing our council meeting still over, over Zoom, and the port on my phone is not able to receive my charger for some reason. I thought, I think it's broke. Turns out it wasn't broke. It was just really, really dirty. I cleaned it later that night by watching a couple YouTube videos, and it works pretty good now. But while driving, if you haven't cleaned the port of your phone, you're supposed to use a toothpick too, by the way, not metal. You might be surprised at the amount of dirt that comes out of it. I couldn't charge my phone, and as I'm driving back from football practice, I'm on this Zoom meeting on my phone with all the other council members, and I simply have to say, I'm sorry, everybody, but my phone is now down to about 3%. It's going to stop working. I don't know what I'm going to do if I can't get this fixed because it's like a 98% of my life resides in this thing, and, I, and you have this panic attack like, I don't have any of these phone numbers that I can get. I don't know. How would I call anybody? How would anybody even call me? Anyway, so I said, I'm just going to have to sign off. I'm going to try to get to the iPhone repair place on Pearl Drive. We'll talk after, because we were mostly done already, and I logged off. And I pulled up to the iPhone place, closed. It's about, it's about 7.10. Oh, it was just before 7. And this is why I remember it's just before 7. Pull up, it was closed. Great. So I pulled across the street to Lambert's, because the parking lot was open, and I'm Google mapping phone repair. Close, 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 close. The AT&T store on the corner of... Red Bank Road and the Lloyd Expressway open till 7. It's just before 7, but I'm really, really close, aren't I? I'm going to get this solved because I need my phone. I pull up. I see people, AT&T people, in the place. The door is opened. I pull over by this truck. I get out of my car. They must have seen me coming up because they got up from the table that they were in, walked to the door, and as they saw me walking toward it, locked it and then went back to doing what they were doing. And I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to all of you. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go home. And I did. And I Googled and I YouTubed and I found out about how to clean the port out of your phone. I also learned that if you use alcohol, which I did, and you try to plug it in, there is a some intricate sensor within your phone that says moisture is detected, cannot charge. I learned all kinds of things that night. But sometimes we feel like justice demands a response, and it doesn't always. It just is what it is. It was about 7 o'clock, and they had every right to lock that door. It was me that was frustrated that I wasn't going to be able to get in and at least get it figured out at that moment. Forgiveness also doesn't mean forgetting or pretending it didn't hurt. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you don't still get angry about what happened. Forgiveness means that you aren't spending your energy plotting, scheming, or seeking to punish someone else for their behavior. You just might not allow yourself to give it any more energy from your own life. So before I share, I think I know what the next slide is. Yeah, before I share that, I want to share another story that happened this week that deals with forgiveness. Because it, it, it really bothers me right now. And I think by sharing the story, it's going to help us all to be able to relate to experiences and moments in our lives in which we felt like, it's really, really hard to forgive for a, a situation or a circumstance that could have been avoided. And sometimes when it happens in the midst of 
having people that you really trust in, confide in, um, look up to, feel as if they even look up to you in a way, and you're trying to do the most responsible things. Things don't always happen in the manner in which you think they should go. Some of my family spent most of this week in Nebraska finishing clearing out the house that my mother and my stepfather lived in for quite a few years. We moved into that house my junior year in high school. So I wasn't there a long time, but it's been the house that we'd go back to for Christmases and Easter's, birthdays, all that kind of stuff. Galen, my stepdad, a year ago, um, had a stroke, which he was never able to return back home. So ultimately, the house needs to be sold. We kept it for about as long as we could. Repairing sprinkler heads, paying for the air conditioning, the electric, the water, there's a water pipe burst. His truck was in the garage, and from sitting so long and being cold in the winter, the water pump broke. Just things that go on when you don't use something, right? And in consultation, and in complete openness with someone who is suffering from vascular dementia, a decision was made to sell the house so the resources from that home could be added to the remainder of his retirement funds, and it would sustain his time at the current residence in which he is, Fountain Point. And we were doing everything that we could to do that. I was back. Other members of my family were back when, when we could be back. My brother in Omaha, my brother in Kansas, vacation time, all of those things. And in the midst of all of that, when they were there this week, we received a phone call from Adult Protective Services that someone's accusing us of misusing his finances and I had to go through an interview with Adult Protective Services to see if that was actually happening. And that investigation is ongoing. For those of you that see me driving a Subaru and you didn't know I drove a Subaru, and if you think, well, gosh, maybe it does make sense. He is driving a Subaru. Maybe he is taking some money. In full disclosure, <laughs> that vehicle was gifted to me by my father when his wife died. And probably some of the money that he received from her life insurance or her investments or whatever he received, he bought a new one and he said, why don't you just have this car? For those of you that see me driving a new truck, I bought that truck from Gary Hardig. <laughs> Gary Hardig got himself a brand new red little truck. I don't know if he got the roll bars in the back of it yet or not. I don't think you're going to take that Baja on or not, but I don't know if you do. I want to go with you. And he was selling his truck and my truck was older over 200,000 miles, some little things going on, and so Gary and I did a deal, and he sold me that truck for $1. <laughs> I just have to find a way to make up the $24,999 extra dollars that went into that. And I'll do that through monthly payments. So here's my thing. How do you, when you pour your heart into something, and you think you're helping someone in such a manner, and then you anonymously receive an accusation like that, go about seeking to forgive because they can't tell you who the person was that made the, the accusation. And here's how the interview starts. Hi, my name is such and such. I want you all to know, because we were on a conference call, my brothers were there sitting with her, and I was sitting in the office over here at the parsonage. I just want you all to know that I cannot arrest you. I don't have the power to do that. I am only here to gather information. The information that I gather will be given to my direct supervisor for further review. And upon that review, if we deem that there is something that is amiss, that report will be given to law enforcement. And that law enforcement then could arrest you. We want you also to know that if there is some accusation in which you are found guilty. Could show up on your record. It could affect your future employment. It could affect your current employment. We just need you to know these things before we begin. And I said, Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday. I threw a Happy Birthday on that one. And the whole time you're thinking, what is going on? And why is such a thing happening? 
You may have had moments like this in your life where you feel like, why is this happening? How can I begin to think about forgiving? And so here is what we mostly resolved ourselves to. Talking about my brother Joe, Kurt, and myself. That we have to believe that we, in making the decisions that we have made, are the right thing for Galen. And that is our only focus. And if they want any sort of information, they can completely have it because there has been no wrongdoing. There has been nothing that's taken place. But sometimes people misconceive what could be happening just by looking at something from the outside in. Forgiveness, I think, like grief, takes time to heal from. And it can't happen quickly. It won't happen quickly. But it doesn't have to completely devastate us to the point that it keeps us from recognizing the wonderful people that we continue to be. That's a small little example of an event. You all have your own particulars. We all do. There was one that took place a while ago. It was almost 17 years ago. Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. I don't know if anyone remembers this event but it's a great testament to forgiveness. It was at this very small school that a gunman entered, led to a hostage situation, and killed five schoolgirls and left five others seriously ended, uh, wounded. And it rocked this small, close-knit community of Amish believers. And it was shocking as the violence took place, but also what was so shocking was the response from the families and the community of victims. I take strength in my very small, unsubstantial situation from this story, because if they can handle the situation in which they had, I think I can very easily, and so can you. Because even as outsiders were responding with compassion for this Amish community in the wake of the shooting, Many Amish community members were doing another kind of work. They were softly and subtly and quietly beginning the difficult task of forgiveness. Within a few hours of this shooting, some of the Amish community were already reaching out to the killer's family. Some had already went to the gunman's wife, children, and extended families, offering words of sympathy and love and forgiveness. And as all the cameras and bright lights made their way amongst this community for interviews and questions, the Amish insisted that they forgave the gunman almost immediately. A few days later, the community showed up at the gunman's funeral and even reached out with financial support to his family. And after several weeks had passed, They even met with his wife and other family members at a local firehouse. In each of these situations, the Amish community modeled an authentic and powerful witness to what forgiveness might look like. There's a book entitled Amish Grace. If you've read it, if you've seen it, if you have it, which inspired a Lifetime movie a few few years later that looked at the underlying questions of what it means to be forgiving and to forgive. As they spoke to the Amish community about forgiveness, they found an incredibly strong rooting in the community's belief that forgiveness was an expectation for what it meant to follow Jesus Christ. The most prominent citation given from Scripture was the parable that we read today from Matthew 18. It's a parable of extremes. Remember the talents? 
and denarii. The concept of 10,000 talents was astronomical. Both 10,000 and talents were words that were the biggest units in Greek at the time. It'd be equivalent to saying you owe a million bajillion dollars or some inconceivable number. It was absurd. It's 77 times seven kind of forgiveness of debt. It's huge. A denarii, a, day, a day's labor. So contrast that. Somebody was forgiven a gazillion billion dollars, and they went and left this, and somebody owned, owed them a few, a day's worth of dollars. But they grabbed them by the throat, and they said, give me what you owe me, and I'm throwing you in prison because you can't. While we might expect to repeat of the grace exhibited to this person who has forgiven a gazillion billion, we see the opposite. English poet Alexander Pope wrote this, to err is human, but to forgive is divine. As the professors discovered in their research of this Amish community, they found that it's because for the Amish, forgiveness isn't just something you talk about, Forgiveness isn't just something that you read about. It's a way of life. Forgiveness, for all of us, comes in the form of something that we have to do again and again and again and again, maybe 77 times. And so I ask you to just consider, as you move through your journey of forgiveness, Allow it to be little by little. Allow yourself to consider how you feel and why you feel the way you do. And as those Amish community members did, continue to find a way to incorporate the examples of others who are better at it than we are into your own lives and into your own actions. Certainly not easy but completely possible. Would you please pray with me? Dear gracious Lord, as we draw close to the end of this worship gathering today, we understand that there are all kinds of experiences and moments and things that have happened in all of our lives in incredibly unique ways. And so today we just lift our own unique issues to you. We lift our own unique inabilities to let go of some of the things that have hurt us deeply, that need to be forgiven, and ask you to help us to come to terms with it, to help us to embrace it, hold on to it, but to not allow it to steal any of the energy from us that we have to give to each day that we are blessed to walk into. It's one of the hardest things to do, we understand, but we know that all things can be possible through you. So simply guide us and lead us and take us into communities of faith that embrace us for who we are, that accept us for all of our flaws, that accept us for all of our gifts, and that accept us simply for the people that we have been created to be in your image. We offer this prayer in thankfulness to you and in appreciation for the teachings of Jesus Christ, who generations ago also taught a version of this prayer. Together we share it, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of our favorite hymns that we sing awesome next to How Great Thou Art and Amazing Grace and all that kind of stuff is Holy, Holy, Holy.
So I can't wait uh, to sing it with you today. Would you please stand if you would like as we close our worship today with this incredible hymn. To all of us gathered here today and beyond, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to blessing you, to have an incredible upcoming week, whatever it is. Try to make the best of it. Don't go to AT&T to get your phone fixed. Find a way to do it on YouTube, all that good stuff. Have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you all as soon as we can be together again. May God guide you, may God lead you, and may God bless you on your journey. Our worship here this morning at Zion Lippe United Church of Christ has ended. Let our service now begin. Amen.